Hi everybody, this is Anne. We've been getting a lot of requests to see the finished pieces from our last couple of construction-based videos. As luck would have it, I also just received a shipment of commercial glazes that I've been wanting to experiment with. So this week, we'll be glazing our brushes off. Featuring the world's ugliest test tiles, sorry about that, and the island of misfit pottery. If you'd like to see how I made all these pieces, check out the links above to both the Folded Pottery Projects and Template Pottery Project videos. Since I didn't have any experience with many of these particular glazes, I thought I should make some test tiles first before committing the glaze to my pottery. I applied the glaze in a variety of ways, from dipping, to brushing, and layering several glazes over each other. I then high fired the test tiles in my electric kiln to cone 5 for some really interesting results. This is one of my favorites. I dipped Amico Smoke and then dipped Amico Snow over that. Look at those lovely oil spots. Jim and I thought that combination might look really cool over this folded vase. Here's another combo that was interesting. As you can see, the warm color just over the edges where the glaze broke. Plus, it kept a nice distinct line between the snow and the satin matte yellow. We thought it might look striking over this modern monolithic planter. This tile was made by brushing wasabi over the surface, then layering Mako Blue Opal over the wasabi. The blue cooled down the bright green, plus turned electric blue in the textured areas. As this plate had a lot of texture on it, we thought that combo of glazes might highlight all the mountains and valleys. Next, we tried Mako Turquoise over this piece. It really breaks nicely over edges and leaves a darker color blue where it pools, giving it a subtle contrast. We thought this pastel glaze might look nice over the texture of this folded bowl. Next, I played around with the Amico Marigold Celadon Glaze. On this tile, it worked well over texture and had a nice dimensional glossy finish. I had two of these bowls and thought the marigold yellow color would turn this bowl into a stunning summer berry bowl. On this tile, I brushed Low Fire Spectrum Wisteria over the tile and covered it with the Amico Snow. The Wisteria turned light blue at my mid-range temperature and the snow created this lacy pattern over it that mimicked sea foam. In keeping with the beachy theme, we thought that would be perfect for this origami conch shell vase. On this tile, I brushed okra over the surface. This yellow is still warm, but it has more of an earthy color over my porcelain clay. It seems to break well over texture without much streaking. I'm hoping it'll look nice over this really cool triangle vase. For this tile, I dip it in marigold and then layered it with weeping plum. Although those colors are opposites on the color wheel, they seem to blend over each other really well without muddying up. I thought that unlikely combination might be perfect over this plucky vase. We shall see. Speaking of the weeping plum, it really was a beautiful color on its own. It displayed a glossy shell and broke very well, like its other Celadon sisters. We thought it might look nice over this origami pinwheel candle holder. The next glaze was the Amico Jade. This tile shows the jade layered over snow, but it's a beautiful color on its own and had some very dramatic breaks over textures. As this bonbon box also displays a lot of drama, we thought the combination of the two might be striking. Here's another striking glaze that breaks well and looks elegant on my porcelain. It's the Amico Sky Blue. I'm hoping it'll highlight the texture on this envelope folded piece. The first thing I did was clean all the bisque ware so that it was dust free. Now it's time to glaze. To achieve similar results from each test tile, I used various glazing techniques to get the same glaze thickness. On this folded vase, I poured the glaze. First I poured to the inside and let it dry completely. Then I poured it over the outside until it covered the whole piece. Once that was dry, Jim dipped just the top of the piece in Amico Snow. Mm -hmm. 
Most of the other pieces I brushed with a fan brush, like I did on this planter. All the glazes were fresh, and I used most of them straight out of the jar, except the ochre that I used on the triangle vase. It was too thick to brush, so I added a little water before applying. Another thing I had to be aware of was to make sure all the glaze penetrated all the valleys of the textures. A brush can be notorious for skipping over the slider indentations. One other note to self, keep good notes as you glaze. It's easy to lose track of how many layers you apply and which glazes you want to apply over others. Now here's the folded vase that we dipped and poured. I wasn't sure if the snow glaze would drip down, but it didn't. I was pleased to see that I got some oil spotting, but I would have preferred them to be a little larger. I love the drama from the play between the dark and the light glazes. Now here's the triangle vase. The color was pretty true to the color on the bottle, even if I did have to thin it out a little. It resulted in a nice shiny shell around all the symmetrical edges and broke in the carved lines exactly where I wanted it. Now here's the freeform planter. I was disappointed that the snow didn't give more opaque coverage over the yellow. I was hoping that the yellow would just show through a little on the edges and you could see the warm yellow line of glaze at the bottom. Oh well, I might reglaze and fire this one again. Now here's the textured trifold plate. This combo of glazes seemed to be pretty true to the test tile that I created. The opal blue really cooled down the wasabi and really highlighted the texture with that touch of electric blue in the crevices. Now here's the Mako turquoise bowl. Again, the color matched more of the results that we got from the test tile more than it matched the picture that was on the bottle. I love how the blue turns darker where it's pooling in the valleys of the textures. It's a really nice contrast. Now here's the much warmer marigold bowl. It was very true to the color on the bottle. The picture on the bottle even conveys the thick glossy shell that gives it depth. Like the turquoise bowl, the yellow becomes darker where the glaze is pooled and breaks over the edges. Here's the conch shell vase. I was very happy with our glaze choice here. I brushed the wisteria over the conch, then poured the snow over just the top. It really ran down the sides for a very lacy appearance, which really does look like the foam of the ocean. Now here's the darted plucky vase. Originally, I was hoping to get more of a variegated appearance for a whimsical look by brushing the glaze on strategically. In hindsight, I should have poured the weeping plum over the marigold all the way down to avoid brush marks and to get more of a solid look. I think I'll reglaze this one and fire it again. Now here's the pinwheel candle holder. I brushed three coats as recommended of the weeping plum over the surface and was very pleased that I didn't get streaking or brush marks. It was a solid coverage over the entire piece, leaving a semi-opaque appearance over the texture. Now here's the origami bonbon box. The jade glaze is a little lighter than the picture on the bottle when applied over my porcelain. I brushed three coats of the glaze over the outside and it melted without any brush marks or drips, but a little bit of streaking. It broke over the texture really nicely and the combination of the thick glossy snow on the inside gave the whole piece a very dynamic but elegant appearance. Now here's the envelope folded piece. I brushed the entire exterior with three coats of the sky glaze and fired it on hand-built spiky stilts. The contrast between the white interior and the blue of the glaze is lovely, plus the white of the interior brings out the areas where the sky breaks over the edges. I was very happy with this piece. I really enjoyed working with the commercial Amico glazes and look forward to hearing your experiences with them in the comments below. If you enjoyed our videos, please like share, and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.
someday I'd like to be a, a dentist. 